Welcome to your backstage pass for Boscov's Berks Jazz Fest here on the People Chronicles and thanks very much to the Berks Arts Council for making this series possible. It's been fun. We really do go backstage with artists and volunteers for Boscov's Berks Jazz Fest, which is coming up in just a couple of weeks. I yep. believe it's April 1st through the 10th. Dave Cullen, thanks for making the oh, time to come in. It's so great to be here today. I love it. Yeah. And this is, if you haven't known, Dave Cullen, our, our resident Grammy Award winner. <laughs> that, I mean, I'm so proud. I'm proud of that. It's gotta feel good. Cause like I said, I know a Grammy winner. It does feel good. Um, wow, do we have time for one quick yes, story? Yes, absolutely. Because this whole thing with the Grammy, yeah. I, I don't pull it out too much. I mean, it's in my bio and, and everything, but I have to tell a quick story. Please. Okay, do you remember that Taylor Swift was here? Yes. About three weeks ago? Uh, she okay. was here for a wedding. Oh, that's right. That was a big high security deal. High security deal. Yeah. So the Friday night, I played the rehearsal dinner for, for Taylor Swift. Well, not for Taylor Swift, for Brittany Mack. Yeah. Where Taylor Swift was going to be there. And I got contacted with this, you know, a few months ago. They said, please don't say anything because Taylor's going to be there. So I was like, okay, I want to keep the gig. We'll see what happens. So lo and behold, we get there Friday night. Taylor Swift is there. And she's cool and she's nice. And she has a few security people around. But it's all very mellow, very good, great party. And she's getting ready to leave. Her mom's and her at the door. And I, I need to go and just shake a hand and say hello. Yeah. So I went and said hello to her mom. And Taylor Swift was talking to one of her friends from first grade. Aww. Because there were about 10 friends of hers from first grade there. She was having the best time in the world. Just, she was right. so nice to everybody. She was tremendous. So her mom's there. And Taylor's talking. And I just said, uh, hi, can I say hi to Taylor? And, she, and her mom goes, oh, you sounded so great on that guitar. You were so good. And I was trying to figure, what can I do just to kind of, you know, make this a little, to, to, to kind of expedite this, right. this introduction. I go, well, did you know that I won a Grammy? <laughs> did you? <laughs> That's and Taylor Swift's mom goes, you did? You won a Grammy? I said, yeah, I won a Grammy for the best pop instrumental in 2004. And then she goes, Taylor, Taylor. And Taylor turns around and she goes, oh, hello, hey, you sounded so good. And then the, the mom goes, that, um, she, that, that, then Taylor's mom says, hey, he won a Grammy. And she goes, you did, wow, that's great. So anyway, it was just, I rarely pulled that card out, but that's my quick Taylor. It was an appropriate time. But it was a good time because Taylor had just won Grammy for album of the year. So yeah, yeah. I at least had to say, well, I got a little one like many years ago. So, no, it's a but big that one. Was, but that was funny just because, anyway, that I pulled out the Grammy card there, so I'm sorry. No, I wouldn't <laughs> apologize for that because if I won one, I think I'd be But it was to great because I got to yeah. talk to her for a little bit and we yeah. were hanging out and then, then she left. And that was you it. know what's nice to hear? That she, she was so nice and very well, normal. Well, can I, can I do my, my imitation? Sure. I'll do my imitation. So her mom goes, Taylor, Taylor. She turns around, she goes, oh my God, you sounded so good. <laughs> oh my God. And then she gives me a big hug. Did she? And then it was like we were just talking about, you know, music and it was great. She was tremendous. See, that is nice to hear. And it's she one really was. Well, that's one of the things we hear about, honestly, the artists at Jazz Fest, and I have been mm -hmm. blessed over the years to be backstage. Oh my goodness. Um, and I think often we get this perception of artists that they're somehow different oh, from us, they're yeah. better, they're whatever, okay. but they're people last and approachable. Year, last year, Gerald Beasley was setting up for a gig. My brother Matt was doing some of the technical work. Mm -hmm. And Gerald walks up my brother Matt and says, hey Matt, Hey, so what's your brother doing tonight? Hey, 
Can you call him? Tell him to come over and play? See. So how cool was that? It's, it's a family. Yeah. And approachable is a good word. Everybody's It was together, great. So then I came nice. over, sat in, jammed. It was ter tremendous. Well, I'm not surprised that he asked you to. Speaking of sitting in and jamming, you were one of the original oh. Groove Masters. Many Correct. Years, yes. And you're going to be playing with the Groove Masters, I think, three times? Well, those guys do some of the smaller gigs. Uh, they're, they play the peanut bar with Eric. Right. We kind right. of have it worked out. We got our little co op Groove Masters. I'm playing on the Friday night at the Inn at Reading, April 1st. Right, right. And that's going to be the bigger show. They actually had to move it from Building 24. To oh, Inner Reading because we, we needed more room. Well, that's cool. And I understand that's going to be an Alyssa B. Uh, scholarship that's Alyssa fundraiser. B., right. We're, we're doing the Alyssa B. Scholarship um, because she passed away last year and she was mm -hmm. just so tremendous. Um, Benny has, has found a, a singer who is just glad to be following in Alyssa's footsteps. Yeah. And it's going to be a special night. It's going to be tough to do, actually, to step in. To those shoes. It's, it's going to be a great night. I, I can already feel it. So we're very much looking forward to that. Uh, in at Reading, I think, I'm not exactly sure when the show is, but you'll have to it's check. It's Friday night. For the Friday night show, I think it's 9 o'clock. It is, I think, yeah, I agree. I yeah. think it is too. 9 o'clock. Get your tickets. In at Reading. I want that. Yeah. So you teach now. Yes. At three different places, right? Yes, I do. I'm at... Uh, Millersville University, where yeah. they have a music business, music technology oh, program. Okay. There, I, I teach some guitar players who are looking to get into music business, music technology. And they have internships with, um, with a sound company called the Claire Brothers. They're a big oh, sound company. I was trying to think what's and, music business. And okay. they have internships with the American Music Theater, which is right uh, down there in Lancaster. Yeah, yeah. But they also would like to play music, so they need instruction on their instruments. So I teach the guitar players there. I teach at Westchester University, where I teach music ed majors, mm -hmm. music education. And at Elizabethtown College, I teach the music therapy majors. Oh. So I'm teaching different majors at the different schools, but it's all guitar. And, you know, how to use guitar. For, the say, the music business people, they might be doing some some sessions. Mm -hmm. They might be doing jingles, mm -hmm. little sound beds, mm -hmm. you know. We already work on that in, in, their, in their junior year. They have to do, you know, some jingles with guitar. So that's a whole different ballgame, composing a jingle, a one yeah. minute or a 30 second piece versus composing a song. You have 10 yeah. CDs, right? I ten do. CDs? And they're your label plus you're a Wyndham Hill artist, right? Well, no, that was like the label that came, that was a short period of uh, being on this label from California called Solid Air Records. That's it. That's and that's it. James Jensen. Okay. He's a one-man label guy. Worked very hard, got this acoustic label off the ground, and it uh, really got everybody out there, about 10 guitar players. And that's, we had 10 of us, maybe 12 of us. We all put out our own albums, but James Jensen, the producer, said, okay, you guys are going to do a Henry Mancini tribute project. We all want you to contribute one tune. What did that, you choose? Oh, I, uh, uh, I chose The Days of Wine and Roses. Oh, one of my but favorites. But that's the album that won the Grammy. Oh, is it? Right. Oh, cool. That, that was the album. Because we thought, why are we doing this? But it turned out that it, it was a very strong record, mm -hmm. you know, with 10 very strong guitar players playing some great Henry Mancini classic tunes. It got submitted for the Grammys in 2004. And um, we, uh, we had Henry Mancini's daughter. Did you? To kind of do the promotion on it, make some of those Grammy phone calls call up yeah. her people on the Grammy board. So that's part of the music business. That's behind the scenes. That happens in the Oscars. That happens in the Tonys. It happens in the Grammys. People making calls to kind of push their... It happens in politics. No kidding. And so, that's why this is Backstage Pass, because yeah. we're getting the behind the yeah. scenes look. You are so versatile. I mean, I, I see you at different places. I might be going out to dinner, and it's like Dave Collins there, and I get very excited well, yeah. because of your versatility and your talent. So you go from so smoothly from jazz to classical to pop. Do you have a favorite genre? 
I really don't at this no. point. I, I, I mean, I enjoy playing you know, local gigs and the, yeah. you know, playing the pop kind of stuff, a little mm -hmm. jazz, but then we've also been doing this church series once a month. Oh, that's right. You were doing that. That's going to be in conjunction with the fest too. It's that's, a gospel mass? Is it's a it's gospel called? mass with, with Runette Gabriel on oh. April 2nd wow. at 530 at Christ Episcopal Church. Runette is 80 years young and she sings old time gospel so authentically. It's so beautiful. What time is that? It's 5.30 on Saturday, April 2nd at Christ oh, Episcopal wow. Church, which is at Fifth and Court. How did you get involved in that? So it's right around the corner. I've Fifth been doing what they call these theme masses down there. Mm -hmm. Once a month, they have a committee. They pick different artists and we just choose their songs. We did a Pete Seeger mass, Bob Dylan. Pete, wait, a Bob Dylan mass? We did wow. Joan Baez, we did Sting. We do, and we're gonna do it all through this year as well. So the variety keeps me going, it keeps me working. Mm -hmm. um, but I also, I don't get to travel quite as much as I used to because the guys that I used to tour with, they slowed down. Oh, mm -hmm. uh, like Will Ackerman doesn't tour as much. But we're but we are doing we're doing a, a gig in June. We're doing uh, some gigs next fall. I just played with Samite. I don't get to play with him too much, but we just did one on uh, Thursday for a music therapy conference. That was great. So he's but, um, good. He's, isn't he from South Africa? He, he, Africa. He, he's from Uganda. Uganda. Okay. Okay. But, uh, but, uh, but he lives in Syracuse now. Yeah. And we get together a couple times a year. So he's good. It, and then um, I, I play with uh, some people from the Philadelphia Orchestra who have a bluegrass band called the Depew Brothers. Yes. And we play bluegrass. We're going to play the, down at the World Cafe live in April. Again, and it's, it's your versatility be, that's coming out here. Yeah, but it just it keeps everything interesting, keeps me on my toes, and it keeps me working, and it builds my network of people I know and who I can play with. and. On this, on this local, regional level, so it just keeps me working. So, and that's, that's the, the key, you gotta keep working. That is true, yeah. and you can make a living doing what you love, yeah. as, as you are a testament to that. Um, two quick questions. You teach students in a variety of majors, if you will. Yeah. What's the main thing you want a student to learn from you? If they learn nothing else, what do you um, want them to learn? That they have to create their own niche, their own breaks, and that um, you try to instill um, their desire to want to learn and work on that skill so they can draw upon that skill when they need it. Okay. Um, how about, how so, about you? Who was your mentor when you were a student or one of maybe you had the, multiple um well the person his name was ralph towner mm -hmm. and he played, was a great guitar player uh and he helped me on when i moved to new york and got me kind of noticed by some people um but i'm so spread out I, uh, Mostly working guitar players who I, who I said, you know, he's working. You know, a mentor would be a local guy, and his name is Kenny Garrett. Oh, yeah, yeah. K Kenny was always the most working guitar player. Still what? is. And he still <laughs> yeah. is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He's what I call my Zen master. Okay, okay. I call, I call him about once a year, and we leave a phone message on each other's machine, like, okay, we're still working, still doing it, okay. All right, see you next year. We just check in with each other on the phone. It's kind of like Jazz Fest. This is its 26th year, and these artists are still working and still here. Kenny and Garrett as is you amazing, are. yeah. Thank you, Dave. Oh, it's very, been a very pleasure. much. Look it's, forward it's to it's seeing so you at the great. festival. Oh, yeah. All right, bye bye.